Good morning. <laughs> My name is Dr. Tina Richardson, and I have the privilege of serving as the chancellor of the Penn State Lehigh Valley campus. It is also my privilege to welcome you to the 2021 Penn State Commencement Ceremony. A special welcome to all of you who are joining us via live stream on YouTube. We are glad that you could virtually partake in this morning's festivities. Please remove your caps and remain standing for the singing of the national anthem. seated. Before we continue, please remember to stay in your seats and leave your mask on during the entire ceremony. As a reminder, we know you want to take pictures throughout the event, but as mentioned earlier, our professional photographers' photos will be posted to our social media channels. Be sure to follow us and to look for your graduates' photos there. Thank you very much. We're so glad that we could finally come together and have this celebration in person again. Even though our group is somewhat smaller today, this is a wonderful opportunity to celebrate. Because of COVID, COVID uh, we're fo following COVID guidelines, there will uh, be some brevity in my remarks to keep this event down to about an hour. But it's also so important that we share how proud we are with you, and we will do that today. Our graduates, to our graduates, we are absolutely proud of you for not only completing your degree, but showing such incredible resilience throughout this pandemic. And some of you even took on more than the usual. Please raise your hand if you raised a family as you earned your degree. Please raise your hand if you are a veteran. And raise your hand if you are the first person in your family to go to college. Raise your hand if you worked while you uh, attended school. And raise your hand if you were involved in clubs or sports at Penn State Lehigh Valley while you attended. And now raise your hand if you are excited to join the more than 700,000 Penn Staters who know that anywhere you go, 
you can yell, we are, <laughs> and be met with Penn State. Every hand should be up at this point. As a college graduate, research shows that you are, you are likely to embrace a healthier lifestyle, dedicate your time to the community, vote and volunteer more, and become more involved in educational activities with your families. Clearly, you've set yourself up for a very great and phenomenal future. And while we're walking, uh, we're talking about the future, thank you to our Penn State Lehigh Valley Government Association for helping lay the groundwork for more educational opportunities for generations to come by making a significant donation to our campus expansion project. In part, it was their impetus, it, they were the impetus for hosting our very first commencement ceremony on campus grounds. Um, this gives us an opportunity to have the, the expansion as our backdrop. Our graduating classes are clearly uh, uh, visionaries, visionaries who are leaving an indelible mark on our campus through this expansion. Truly, truly, they are inspiring. As is our commencement speaker this year, Dr. Suresh Nair. Dr. Nair is physician in chief of the Lehigh Valley Cancer Institute and leads Lehigh Valley Health Network's academic programs. He is also a proud, I would say a very proud Penn Stater whose message I know you are going to enjoy along with the comments that will be made today by our student marshal. This standout graduate is selected by the chancellor and the chief academic officer with the assistance and input of the campus faculty and undergraduate administrators. This year, the honor goes to Savannah Maleski. Savannah received a Bachelor of Arts in Corporate Communication and a minor in Business in December 2020. Like many of you, she worked numerous jobs on campus and in the community throughout her time as a Penn State Lehigh Valley student. All along, Savannah remained committed to her studies, receiving several, several community merit scholarships, making the dean's list each semester, and graduating Summa Cum Laude. She served as president of Lambda Pi Eta and communications coordinator for the Communications Society. She played a pivotal part in creating the Corporate Communications Canvas Pride in collaboration with key faculty members. More recently, Savannah accepted a position with New Leaf Supports, working with individuals diagnosed with mental and intellectual disabilities. Her goal is to move into internal communications to support her belief that everyone deserves the tools and resources to communicate effectively. In addition to our student marshal, we have a faculty marshal. But before I mention our, our, our faculty marshal, let me just say, that I am absolutely proud of Savannah, and I know that her parents, both Lisa and Cliff, are even more proud than all of the rest of us. So congratulations to them, and congratulations to you, Savannah. So to our faculty marshal, this is a full-time faculty member who is chosen by the student marshal to lead the procession in recognition of his or her academic guidance, support, and inspiration. Savannah chose Dr. Beth Mahalik as the faculty mar marshal this year, and Dr. Mahalik 
thank you for your service in this role. It is tradition for the student marshal to present, uh, present remarks on behalf of the graduating class. So will you now join me in welcoming Savannah Molesky. Thank you, Dr. Richardson. In the five people you meet in heaven, Mitch Album writes that all endings are also beginnings. We just don't know it yet. While we realize today's commencement is a beginning, our journeys are full of endings, turning the pages to the next chapters of our stories. During my freshman year of college, what I thought was an ending at the University of Tampa was only the beginning of my story, marking a new chapter at Penn State Lehigh Valley. My college story has an interesting start. I began as an advertising major at the University of Tampa. At the time, I had no idea how important Penn State would become to me or just how much I would have to overcome. After a devastating head injury at the end of my first semester, I reevaluated my situation and made the decision to take the following semester off, transfer to a college closer to home, and effectively change my major from advertising to corporate communication. Talk about a plot twist. Juggling a full-time course load, several different cognitive and physical therapies a week, and part-time employment, I began to wonder if I would ever be able to graduate on time or with the grades I knew I was capable of earning. How could I live up to the impossible expectations I set for myself if I couldn't even look at a screen for more than an hour without becoming nauseous or suffering yet another migraine? Much like the past year, I adapted to my new circumstances and revised my expectations for both myself and my five-year plan. I learned to strive for excellence rather than perfection because perfection is like the elusive Shangri-La, imagined yet unattainable. I can still remember my first and only B and how crushed I was that my perfect 4.0 was ruined. Professor Wolf talked me through it, assuring me that it somehow made my resume even better. Now, whenever I make a mistake or fall short, I replay Professor Wolf's words in my head. Nobody wants someone who is perfect. It isn't real. Employers want someone who has made mistakes and learned from them, someone who had a life outside their schoolwork and engaged in activities besides homework. I stopped beating myself up for not having the typical college experience because I learned it doesn't exist. Instead, I focused on the privilege of a Penn State education. I realized my story and individual experience was unique and I don't need to graduate at the same time as my high school classmates. Their stories are their own. Determined to make the most out of my short time at PSU, I emerged myself in its narrative, working in the library and strategic communications, communication society, Lambda Pi Eta, and a spring break trip to Greece. I made it my personal mission to weave myself into as many other storylines as I could, leaving my own imprint on the school that would last long after I've graduated. I even became friends with Brenda in the cafeteria, who managed to get me a free seventh row ticket to Steve Miller Band because we bonded over music when I would buy an uncrustable sandwich from her almost every day. Penn State Lehigh Valley is full of other students like me, a mosaic of different stories and personal challenges. If the last year has shown us anything, it is that we are far more resilient than we ever imagined. To borrow from Sir Paul McCartney, We've taken our wings and learned to fly despite the social injustices in the world that threaten to keep us tethered. Aside from the individual struggles we each face, we have made it through an entire year of chaos, uncertainty, and change. Lessons of kindness and solidarity permeate the pages, important reminders that we are all part of something much greater than ourselves. The challenges of the past year have been daunting. The teachable moments and privilege checks, countless. Nevertheless, we persisted, and despite it all, we are here today as Penn State graduates. We are transitioning into the next phase of our lives. Some of us may go on to achieve other higher degrees, others may take time to explore the world, and many of us are headed straight into the job market. 
No matter what the plot of your story is or how COVID may have caused a few pages to stick together, know this, you made this happen. You earned a college degree. You can thank your parents, friends, family, professors for their help along the way. Don't forget that this is your accomplishment. Your diploma will have your name on it. It was your dedication, persistence, and resilience that led you here today. Nowadays, people try to lessen the value of a college degree, claiming a master's is the new bachelor's. Don't let them diminish this achievement. Be proud of yourself for accomplishing something great. You earned a degree in the midst of a pandemic, learning 400 level material through a computer screen. Some of you conducted organic chemistry experiments in your bathroom. Others gained valuable inter internship experience without ever meeting their coworkers and giving the term business casual an entirely new meaning. You've missed out on an entire season of attending Penn State football games at Beaver Stadium, and you spent the last year worried about having enough paper products and hand sanitizer to last through the century. But remember that no two stories are the same. No matter how many plot twists we've all encountered, how long it took to arrive at this moment, or the obstacles along the way, today is a day of celebration and accomplishment. I have learned that the most important part of my story is not the experiences, but the relationships I have formed as my story continues to unfold. The relationships and knowledge are what I will carry with me long after I've moved on from Penn State Lehigh Valley. How many of you can say that your professor has helped you breathe through several panic attacks at a moment's notice, on the phone, in her office, or in a Santorini airport bathroom, or even before giving a speech at graduation? It's not every day that you meet such passionate, caring educators who would eagerly go to bat for you. My professors have been the greatest champions for my success and the first to say my name in a room full of opportunities. I would not be standing here today without Dr. Beth Mahalik and Professor Bob Wolf. For their support, guidance, and advocating on my behalf, I'm eternally grateful. Mentors like Mahalik, Wolf, and other teachers I've had throughout my education have provided lessons that built on my foundation as a student to become the young professional I am today. They are the reason I feel confident entering the real world and prepared to write the rest of my story in pen. The ABCs are a fundamental lesson you learn in preschool, and the alphabet is the foundation on which you build the rest of your education. As we grow older, the ABCs still represent the basic principles of a discipline, but with a new association for each subject. As a salesperson, ABC is a reminder to always be closing. As a corporate communication student, I define it as accuracy, brevity, clarity. Renowned Peruvian fashion photographer Mario Testino takes his ABCs one step further when he says, quote, my favorite words are possibilities, opportunities, and curiosity. I think if you are curious, you create opportunities. And then if you open the doors, you create possibilities. <laughs> End quote. Your learning does not, should not stop when your formal education comes to a close. I encourage all of you to continually seek out new and exciting possibilities to learn and grow. Now, as college graduates, I propose another mantra of the ABCs to help guide the next chapter of our stories. Always be curious. Thank you. Thank you, Savannah. Your passion serves as an inspiration to all of us, and we wish you the very best, the absolute best in your career and in your personal life. We've had the, the privilege of working with you and supporting you through your development, and we know you will go on to do great things. Now, it is also our tradition for a representative of Penn State Lehigh Valley's Faculty Senate to have the privilege of introducing the commencement speaker. So at this time, I'd like to introduce Dr. David Levert. Dr. David Levert is an Associate Professor of Psychology. He presently serves as the Chair of the Campus Faculty Senate. Will you please welcome Dr. David Levert to the, to the uh, stage?
Thank you for your sanitizing, Chancellor Richardson. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. It is uh, truly a privilege of the chair of the Senate here at Lehigh Valley to introduce uh, this year's commencement speaker, and that I am. It is a wonderful morning for all of us here today. Our commencement speaker, physician in chief of the Lehigh Valley Cancer Institute, and head of the Lehigh Valley Network's academic programs, Dr. Shiresh Nair. Dr. Nair personifies personal and professional achievement, intellectual engagement, ethical decision-making, and civic responsibility. Those qualities we hold high in regard here at Penn State Lehigh Valley. Dr. Nair is a proud Penn State alumnus as well as the father of two recent Penn State graduates. He earned his bachelor's degree in biology from Penn State and his medical degree from Jefferson Medical College in Philadelphia. He completed his residency at Geisinger Medical Center and a fellowship at the University of Pittsburgh. Dr. Nair's clinical practice focuses on the treatment of melanoma, kidney cancer, and the use of immunotherapy. His goal is to provide the highest quality cancer care, both through standard as well as new cutting edge treatments. He is also an active researcher, leading a number of clinical trials at LVHN, including more than 50 T cell, T -cell inhibitor trials at the Lehigh Valley Cancer Institute. Of particular note, Dr. Nair has served as site principal investigator in the National Cancer Institute's Cooperative Group Program for more than 25 years. He served as the first chair of the NCI Early Phase Central Institutional Review Board. No easy task. His research plays a vital role in identifying tomorrow's innovative treatments for cancer patients. Dr. Nair has also worked to improve medical training. He started the Hematology Oncology Fellowship at LVHN and served as the initial program director. We are proud of Dr. Nair's vital work, his caring, his energy, and his engagement in the research that will advance the treatment for cancer and the quality of life of survivors. From my brief interaction with Dr. Nair this morning, I have a great sense of how wonderful a clinician he must be. We are certainly gratified that he is here joining us today and supporting our Penn State students. And now, once I've sanitized the microphone, Dr. Shiresh Nair. Thank you so much, Dr. Livert, Chancellor Richardson, and Penn State Lehigh Valley Class of 2021 for inviting this proud Penn Stater to be part of your live commencement. Uh, I would like to start by congratulating each graduate, as well as your family and friends, and both here and online. And what a beautiful setting, and the uh, weather gods are with us too. Um, graduates, your time is now. As I look around and see, see the beautiful sight here, um, you belong to several generations. Some of you may belong to the uh, generation known as Gen Z, uh, born 1997 to 2015. I'm sorry, it's actually 2012, numbering about 68 million. Some of you may be categorized as millennials from 1981 to 1996. Uh, some of you may be from um, what's called Gen X, and I know um, myself and uh, many of the parents, grandparents out there are from the boomer generation. And you're the children of the Gen X and the boomer generation. And looking around, I can say with certainty, you will change the world for the better. Um, class of 2021, just as Savannah's accomplishments, you pivoted this past year in a world paralyzed by COVID. You relied on the enduring values of resilience, optimism, and engagement, just like the parents' generations did in other adversities, 
which allowed you to finish your education and receive this world-class degree today. We are so proud of you. There's sure to be battle scars. Um, this isn't over yet, but we're getting better. Stresses of social isolation, feelings of depression, anxiety, financial tensions. Coming from a caring generation, be sensitive and offer help to each other, and especially those who are struggling as we normalize. We all feel a sense of optimism with spring turning to summer, and as the highly effective COVID vaccines lead us closer to herd immunity. Grads, um, today you're joining a proud rank of Pennsylvania State University graduates dating back to 1855 and numbering a total decrease since 1855 of 850,000. We're a hardy and loyal bunch, as Dr. Richardson said, with more than 700,000 living alumni and have the best alumni association by far in the world. Half of us live in Pennsylvania, where one out of every six college grads is a Penn State graduate. This day is very personal to me, as I was in your shoes in 1982, and I was in your parents' shoes. Uh, my wife, Terry, and I were in our um, parents' shoes in 2012 and 2018 when our children graduated from Penn State and pursued their dreams. We just um, uh, had our, uh, the birth of our first grandchild three weeks ago, which is part of our dream as well. Um, I, thank you. <laughs> uh, baby Teddy, we call him. <laughs> I also have Penn State to thank you for introducing me to my wonderful wife, Terry, who's there. Um, I, was, I was a resident at Geisinger, and it was the 1986 magical season when uh, Penn State was driving towards their second national championship. We had just won the first one in 1982, and I thought these things happen about every four years. <laughs> So um, I had some extra tickets that I came by on a Friday. I already had tickets to go to the game. And I went around on each of the floors at Geisinger saying, anybody want extra tickets? Face value. And all of a sudden, this busy nurse came around the corner yelling, who the heck is Dr. Nair? And I said, that's me, <laughs> your scalper. Um, I was, so it was the best connect the dots moment in my life. So what is connect the dots? When Steve Jobs gave the commencement speech at Stanford, he looked back on his life. He said that in the moment, you can't predict who, who you may meet or what experience you may have in a given day that may change your life in a profound way. You can only look back and connect the dots. I know the parents out there can share that about each of their lives. So as we go through life, we have to stay humble and resilient, continue lifelong learning, and engage with people, just the same message that Savannah delivered. Don't be frustrated if jobs, internships, relationships, grad schools don't materialize right away. Something even better may be right around the corner. Steve Jobs uh, dropped out of college because his parents were struggling financially and took some time to find himself. He audited free college classes, learned computer coding, and cre only created Toy Story and Pixar. Um, the, um, I'm sorry, um, he actually started at Apple through engagement with a friend. And when Apple fired him, that's when he founded the Pixar and created Toy Story. Then the Apple board begged him back, and he just went on to revolutionize the world with the iMac, iPhone, iPad, before he lost his life all too early to a rare form of pancreatic cancer. Connect the dots. When I look back on my life, my formative years at Penn State played the most pivotal role in my life. I just didn't know it at the time. My late father came to join an amazing professor in Ames, Iowa to work on his PhD in chemistry in the 1960s from a little village in the southern part of India. We were reunited as a family when I was 11. Um, I went from India to Southside Chicago to rural York County, all in sixth grade. I started Penn State uh, seven years later, and I was still trying to acclimate to the culture of this wonderful country and all the opportunities. I left Penn State with so much more than a fantastic education in the College of Science. I left belonging to a peer group and a we are spirit that existed at Penn State then, just as it exists here today. 
Terry and I have watched with pride the focus on enrollment, campus visibility, and academic excellence that Chancellor Richardson is leading right here at Penn State Lehigh Valley. Close to 1,000 students from this area are here, surrounded not only by the most beautiful natural scenery, but also by some of the most dynamic businesses, healthcare networks, and jobs. Just as COVID was starting to reach the Lehigh Valley in March of last year, you broke ground on the beautiful expansion right here, including the Charles W. Dent STEM wing that's nearing completion. Science came to our rescue with the rapid development of the mRNA vaccines by Pfizer, Bion, as well as Moderna. These vaccines were injected into many of our arms in a record time of nine months. Four months later, over 100 million of us have been fully vaccinated and our cases and death rates continue to decrease. At the peak of the COVID surge at, at, our, at my hospital, we have Alley Cedar Crest, we had over 300 COVID patients. Today, we're down into the 30s. The STEM lab will foster the, foster the talents of young men and women to solve other future problems of society. Now, let's talk about scientists making an impact on our lives. Many of them started in labs just like the STEM wing that's about to open. The major discovery leading to safer mRNA vaccines was made by a Hungarian scientist, Katalin Kariko. She came to Temple University as a PhD postgrad. As many postgrads do, she was struggling between jobs at Penn State when her mentors would lose funding. And she was at a photocopier, uh, which existed back in the day, and she struck up a conversation with a famous HIV researcher, Dr. Weissman at Penn. He was looking for an assistant with mRNA experience. Dr. Carrico and Dr. Weissman made an important discovery called nucleoside modification uh, on the mRNA, which made the vaccine safe, and she published this in 2005. Engagement again. Dr. Carrico was senior vice president of BioNTech, which partnered to produce the Pfizer vaccine. More scientists, the 2020 Nobel uh, Price in Chemistry was shared by two women, Dr. Charpentier from France and Dr. Jennifer Dudna from Cal Berkeley. They met at a research conference, again, a conversation, engagement. This, um, this led to the discovery that bacteria had an enzyme that could precisely edit DNA, not only in bacteria, but in humans. And this, this uh, technology is called CRISPR, Cas9, and this, this is uh, DNA technology is going to revolutionize many of the maladies that uh, mankind is facing. Um, the, this CRISPR-Cas9 technology is on the brink of curing sickle cell disease, childhood blindness, and even some forms of cancer. I was so inspired by their work that I emailed their company, CRISPR Therapeutics in Boston, about collaborating. The next day, I received an email from their chief scientific officer leading to a Zoom call, and we hope to work with this company as we launch stem cell transplants and CAR-T at the Lehigh Valley Cancer Institute over the next year. It's okay to dream big, graduates. Just like in the 1993 Jamaican bobsled movie, Cool Runnings, uh, dreaming big and allowing yourself to fail in a protected way is important. Just as it is, you can pick yourself up and move forward. In 2013, Bristol-Myers Squibb, Squibb introduced a major advance in cancer care with a medicine called Updevo. This essentially took the brakes off our own T cells so our, our own body could naturally defeat cancer. This ushered in a new wave of immunotherapy, replacing chemotherapy in many cancers. Our Cancer Institute threw, threw our hat in the ring to be one of the 10 US sites for phase two testing of Updevo in advanced melanoma. It was our Jamaican bobsled moment. Um, I said, why not Lehigh Valley? We were selected, and a young mom from Easton with advanced melanoma, in considered incurable at the time, with uh, two young daughters, became a miraculous cure. This launched our program to a national stage in immunotherapy, prompting Memorial Sloan Kettering to pick us as one of their three national partners for cancer research and care. In 2010, the Wall Street Journal ranked Penn State as the number one school in the country for corporate recruiters to recruit new undergrads. Just last year, in 2020, a nationwide survey of 334 corporate business recruiters ranked Penn State number five, along with MIT, 
for preparing students for life after graduation. What's in the water at Penn State, Chancellor Richardson? <laughs> the number one trait used by recruiters to describe all of us is that we're hardworking. We, we also receive high marks for critical thinking and problem solving skills. Let's give a shout and an applause to our Penn State faculty. My son Jake transferred into Penn State in his third year. He had been attending an expensive private school in DC, costing us twice as much where the faculty were rushing to leave the city by 3 p.m. When Jake transferred into Penn State Shriers, his teachers often stayed until 7 p.m. to help him figure out something he wasn't getting in his physics class or to discuss research. The Penn State faculty are so invested in the we are spirit as well. Recruiters consistently rank Penn State high in leadership skills, all, all the graduates of Penn Staters. Noting that in 2018, a LinkedIn analysis that looked at 12,000 of uh, all the CEOs in the country that were listed on LinkedIn of companies with 50 or more employees, they looked at which undergrad um, program they came from. Penn State was tied with Stanford for number two. Um, not only that, uh, when they looked at the CEOs of Fortune 500 companies and even the top 100 of the Fortune 500 companies, Penn State was tied for number two there as well. Uh, um, several of our notable Penn State CEOs that have been leading the top 100 companies in the, in the U.S. recently retired. Um, our own Bill Spence, uh, our commencement speaker from two years ago, who took PPNL to such international heights, uh, recently retired. Um, Mark uh, Parker took Nike to great heights over his eight years, and he recently retired. And Ken Frazier, who really built Merck into the phenomenal company that it is and helped also revolutionize cancer care with the medicine, Katruda, uh, just retired. And he was picked in uh, a magazine that I usually don't read. It was called, it's called CEO Magazine. And he was picked by the CEOs of Fortune 500 companies as this year's CEO of the year. And um, um, so we, we really do well in all over the world, and especially here in Pennsylvania. We also receive high marks for research, global perspectives, and sustainability. I think the real magic to a Penn State education is the we are spirit. Socialization skills where we accept each other and our differences, but celebrate how we all fit, in, fit into a beautiful whole. I think it's the tailgating, uh, the socializing, the football games, and giving back highlighted by Thon. And how about the, the Lehigh Valley Penn State class for the tremendous amount of money that you raised for the STEM building and for the expansion? <laughs> All of you are leaving a proud legacy here, and that's, that's what we talk about when we say about the we are spirit. Keep connecting the dots through our alumni association and celebrate your accomplishments and your life on, a, on your special day with your loved ones. We're all proud of you, and we are? Yes. All right, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nair. Your message was both motivating and timely. Now, we move to the main event, what we have all been waiting for, and that is conferring the degrees. And again, we will be taking an individual picture of the graduates as, they, as their names are announced, um, and um, they will be uh, featured in, in our live stream. So I would ask family and friends to remain in your seats as we confer the degrees. And graduates, please unmask when your name is called. Look at the videographer and second, at the photographer before taking your seat. This will allow us to get a superb picture of you. Okay. 
Let's start by uh, bringing attention to our high achieving students. You may have noticed that some students are wearing cords today. Students who are graduating summa cum laude are wearing a blue and white cord. Students who are graduating magna cum laude are wearing a blue cord, and students who are graduating cum laude are wearing a white cord. Please hold your, card, or hold your applause until all students in all categories are standing. Will those students graduating summa cum laude please rise and remain standing? Will those students graduating magna cum laude all please rise and remain standing? And now, will those graduating cum laude please rise? Congratulations again, and best wishes for your continued excellence. Please be seated. At this time, I would like to bring um, to attention our military students. Students who are wearing the red, white, and blue military honor cords have honorably served, are serving, or are commissioned to serve in the U.S. military. Will these students please rise? We, we'd like to recognize you for your service and express gratitude to you for your sacrifice. Thank you very much. Please be seated. I would now like to introduce Dr. Mark Gruskin, who served as our Associate Director for Academic Affairs this academic year. Dr. Gruskin will uh, present the graduates. Will the candidate for the associate degree at Penn State University please rise? Chancellor Richardson, on behalf of the faculty, I am pleased to present the candidate who has met the requirements for the associate degree in their major. By virtue of the authority vested in me and as approved by the Board of Trustees, of Pennsylvania State University, I authorize you as the designee of President Eric Barron to confer the candidate, the associate degree earned as certified by the appropriate college faculty and dean. Will the, candid Will the candidates for the baccalaureate degree at Penn State University please rise? <laughs> Chancellor Richardson, on behalf of the faculty, I am pleased to present these candidates who have met the requirements for the baccalaureate degree in their majors. By the, by the virtue of the authority vested in me and as approved by the Board of Trustees of Penn, Pennsylvania State University, I authorize you as a designee of President Eric Barron to confer on each of these candidates the baccalaureate degree earned as certified by the appropriate college and dean. Thank you. Will the candidates be seated? Now, will the candidate for the associate degree and candidates for the baccalaureate degree please stand as your name is read? Remove your mask and smile for your photo. Then please be seated. After, for the, after the candidate for the associate degree is announced, we will announce the candidates for the baccalaureate degree in alphabetical order.
Alex Hatch, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with an Associates in Business Administration. Catherine Abrey, Abru, uh, Catherine Abreu Modesto, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in psychology. <laughs> Jerica Acevedo, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in project and supply chain management. <laughs> Landon Anani, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in business. <laughs> Giuliani Crystal Asmod, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in business. <laughs> Drew Byler, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in psychology. <laughs> Kevin Black, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in corporate communication and a minor in business. <laughs> Brian Bolivar, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in biobehavioral health. <laughs> Jennifer Bosk, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in business, minor in corporate communication, cum laude. Michaela Briani Brown Paul, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in rehabilitation and human services and a minor in psychology. Kate Nicole Burns, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in psychology. Lisa P. Cardenas, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in business, minor in corporate communication, minor in communications. <laughs> John Adam Cartwright, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in project and supply chain management. Ash, Ashley Nicole Casarella, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in rehabilitation and human services. <laughs> Jason Cruz, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in business. <laughs> Jocelyn Marie Cuevas, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in business. <laughs> Ryan Dieterle, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in corporate communication and a minor in business. <laughs> Noah Floyd Fairhurst, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in project and supply chain management. <laughs> Christopher Fiegel, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in psychology, cum laude. <laughs> Rebecca Fuhrer, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in psychology, cum laude. <laughs> Caitlin Germanton, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in corporate communication and a minor in business. <laughs> Jeff 
Brooke, Alexandra, Gimbor, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in corporate communication and a minor in business. Georgia Gonzalez, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in business and a minor in corporate communications. <laughs> Nicole Grazio, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in health policy and administration, cum laude. Katie Joanne Green, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in Rehabilitation and Human Services, magna cum laude. <laughs> Marissa Groller, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in Rehabilitation and Human Services. Manasvini Guru, Guru Sankar, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in Information Sciences and Technology, magna cum laude. <laughs> Selena Haddad, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in Psychology, summa cum laude. Taylor Hampshire, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in corporate communication and a minor in business. <laughs> Bella Hanna, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in health policy and administration and a minor in psychology. <laughs> Violet Hazeen, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in health policy administration and a minor in business. <laughs> Alexa Hess, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in psychology. Timothy James Jordan Hunt, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in psychology. <laughs> David Jabor, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in project and supply chain management. Hesro Johnson III, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in business. Monique Renee Jones, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in psychology and a minor in corporate communications. Rebecca Kelly, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in Rehabilitation and Human Services. <laughs> Carly Cooker, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in Psychology, cum laude. Dylan Lee, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in corporate communication and a minor in business. <laughs> Amia Liu, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in health policy administration and a minor in information sciences and technology. Savannah Molesky, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in corporate communication, a minor in business, summa cum laude.
Melissa Constance Mayer, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in Rehabilitation and Human Services. <laughs> Jeffrey McConnell, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in Information Sciences and Technology, a minor in Security and Risk Analysis. Jamie Lynn McMillan, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in Health Policy and Administration. John Marlo D. Medella, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in Biobehavioral Health. Melody Alondra Mendez, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in business. <laughs> Callista Matrison, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in corporate communication and a minor in business. Hella Niazi, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in corporate communication. What's that? Oh, something good. Okay. Tom, Thomas Dartuzos, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in business. Okay. William James Ogle, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in business and a minor in entrepreneurship. Pooja Patel, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in rehabilitation and human services. Alejandra N. Pena, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in psychology. John Pring, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in rehabilitation and human services. Jacob Roth, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in corporate communications. Austin Jerry Savage, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in business. Eric McCormick Shields, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in corporate communications. Erica Simmons, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in Rehabilitation and Human Services, minor in Psychology, cum laude. Nathan Smith, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in Health Policy Administration. Simon Tomasuski, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in Health Policy Administration, minor in Business, cum laude. <laughs> Hannah Toomey, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in Information Sciences and Technology, cum laude. Dimitrios Valinados, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in business. Jonathan Vargas, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in psychology and a minor in rehabilitation and human services. Alec Welsh, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in business, summa cum laude.
Kevin J. Wirtz, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in psychology. <laughs> Margaret G. Williams, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in psychology. Renee Elizabeth Williams, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in psychology, minor in rehabilitation and human services. <laughs> Elijah Wilson, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in information sciences and technology. Nicholas Young, graduating from the Lehigh Valley campus with a major in business. Thank you. Will the candidates be seated? No. Okay. Yeah. On the motorboard, we have a tassel. Its position is indication of your person's graduation status. When you entered the ceremony today, graduates, you had your tassel on the right. Now that you have graduated, I invite you to shift your tassel to the left side of your motorboard. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, May I present the Penn State University Class of 2021. Would you all join me in applauding the graduates I will now turn, uh, you, would you all be seated? I will now turn it back over to Dr. Richardson. Thank you, Dr. Gruskin. And what a proud moment for all of us. We celebrate you, our graduates. As noted, in the program, the mace is carried at the head of the academic procession and symbolizes the authority of the university. Carrying the mace is a privilege, a privilege that is reserved for the most senior faculty member and our campus marshal, Dr. Roger Egoff. Dr. Egoff is an associate professor of chemistry at Penn State Lehigh Valley. Thank you for serving as our marshal for this ceremony. Now we have some special faculty recognitions that I'd like to make. I would first like to congratulate Dr. Barbara Canalupo and Dr. Mary Hutchinson, who were both granted emeritus status as in their retirement. This is quite an accomplishment, and I want to acknowledge them today. <laughs> Next, would Dr. Beth Mahalik please stand? I would like to congratulate you on earning your doctorate last year and for being hired as our Assistant Professor of Corporate Communications last July. Congratulations. <laughs> would Sandy Kyle please stand? I would like to congratulate you on being promoted to Assistant Teaching Professor of Communications and Arts and sciences last year.
And would Dr. Miriam Kiani please stand? I would like to congratulate you on earning your doctorate last fall. <laughs> Remain standing. I, I would also like to um, congratulate you on behalf of Dr. President Aaron, Eric Barron. It is my privilege to inform you that you have been promoted to assistant teaching professor of mathematics at Penn State University. <laughs> Please join me in congratulating these faculty members for their accomplishments. I am so proud of our faculty and of our distinguished staff. I'm also proud of each and every student who is graduating today, whether you are uh, physically present or online. And so um, congratulations to each and every one of you. But I'd also like to uh, take this moment to say happy birthday to the mother of one of our graduates. <laughs> Lori, your daughter would like me to say happy birthday. <laughs> I'd also like to say happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers and grandmothers that are here and all of those who've supported our graduates. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Lastly, at this time, it is my privilege to introduce a very special person for a special presentation to our graduates, Todd Dietrich, Please come forward. Todd is a 2004 graduate of Penn State University and presently serves as the president of the Penn State Lehigh Valley Alumni Society. Join me in welcoming Todd. Congratulations, graduates. I'm excited to be here representing the Penn State Lehigh Valley Alumni Society. The Penn State Alumni Association celebrates your successes and welcomes you to a proud network of Penn Staters. Beyond the 700,000 Penn State graduates around the world, your Alumni Association is powered by the pride of more than 174,000 graduates who keep their connection to our world-class university strong through their membership in the Penn State Alumni Association. Today, on behalf of the Alumni Association, I'm honored to share our graduation gift to you, a one-year free membership in the Penn State Alumni Association. Your membership keeps you in touch with Penn State and connects you with more than 300 geographically dispersed alumni chapters, interest groups, and college and campus societies. No matter where you'll live, what you've studied, or which campus you attended, we have a group that matches your interests. After graduation, once you're settled, reach out to your local Penn State alumni chapter. Your Penn State family will be happy to hear from you. And in the coming years, when you visit Penn State, we hope you'll enjoy your time on campus and stop by the alumni office or the Hintz Family Alumni Center at University Park. With that, we would like to ask our new graduates to please rise. Would all other Penn State alumni here today please rise as well? It gives me great pleasure to induct all graduating students of the Pennsylvania State University into the Penn State Alumni Association. Congratulations. Please be seated, and at this time, Dr. Richardson will return for closing remarks. Thank you, Todd. Ladies and gentlemen, 
As we come to the close of our ceremony, I would like to acknowledge a few individuals who helped make this event a success. First, I'd like to, take, to thank Tahana Flynn, who has assisted us in signing for the hearing impaired. And secondly, in order for the, uh, an event like this to come together, there is a committee, a committee of faculty, staff, and hardworking individuals who planned this throughout the year. I would like to ask all of those on the commencement committee to please rise. This group, led by Sandy Kyle, <laughs> and Danielle Fondel, as co-chairs of the commencement committee, worked tirelessly. And they worked with the strong and tremendous support of Cal Carol Tomaszynski, Liz Kepner, Camille Cosera, Camille Kaserik and our strategic communications team, Sharon Turcher, Janelle Schuler, and Amy Geary. They have spent countless hours working out every detail and ensuring that this was a wonderful experience. They even held back the rain. <laughs> I think they did a great job. And would you please join me in thanking them for all of their time and effort. I would once again like to thank our commencement speaker, Dr. Nair, for being with us today. You heard the list of his accomplishments. The fact that he could take time to honor us with his presence and insightful words and inspiring message is truly, truly a, a, a treasure. I would also like to thank all of you for sharing this day with us. At the conclusion of the ceremony, our campus marshal, Dr. Egoff, will lead the platform party, faculty, staff, and students for the last time in this recessional. I will ask that you remain in your seats, but remain standing until all of our graduates leave the area. Graduates, I have one last big assignment for you. I would ask that you remain in line. <laughs> okay, remain in line during the recessional until you have reached the tent outside of Center Hall. Okay, I'm going to repeat that. <laughs> Please remain in line and process out at, at, to the tent outside of Center Hall. Congratulations to the class of 2021. You are an impressive class, and we look forward to all the wonderful things in your future. Thank you for allowing us to be a part of your success journey here at Penn State Lehigh Valley. We will close with the singing of the Penn State alma mater, and the words for the alma mater are on, or in the program. In fact, it can be found inside the front cover. Thank you. Please stand.